morning guys so I'm just out at the cabin today just to drop in and see what's going on um, also here to check on my trail cams so shortly after lunch I want to take you guys out to discuss the, the couple of trail cameras that I have um, how I set them up um, some little tips and tricks uh, to help you out if you're setting up some trail cameras this fall or year-round for that matter so I'm gonna have lunch um, I want to show you I got this new little pot it's like a Stanley um, pot 24 ounce it's pretty neat I picked it up at Princess Auto and you just flick it down and when you pop the top off these cool little green cups uh, inside and I've seen a few of you guys with this set and I think it's really good these cups are extremely heavy-duty and they're uh, looks like they're insulated so I'm gonna make some soup for lunch and then after um, we'll follow me along on the trail and I'll go uh, pick up some trail cams and we'll talk about them So we've arrived at the first trail camera. This camera uh, is a second camera that I've purchased. This is the Browning Strikeforce HD. I believe now they have a Strikeforce HD Elite. And you know, it really is one of my favorite cameras. I only have two cameras right now. I'm looking to expand my uh, trail camera arsenal. Let me show you a little bit more about the Strikeforce HD. So as you can see, it's pretty compact. You know, it's quite small. That's what I like about it. It comes with a really long strap so that you can strap it to a tree, a, quite a big tree. This is a, a small tree. And one thing you'll notice when you open it up, well, it's got camouflage, which is nice. So, uh, you know, people can't see it to steal it. And uh, it's also not as visible to the animals when they walk by. You can kind of open it up there. You see it's got a display there. On, off mode, enter, some buttons there. And then this is where your SD card lives. So I'm going to just turn it on for you guys. It has a few modes. Um, certainly trail camera mode uh, is one. The other is video. And then it has time lapse and time lapse plus modes. It uh, takes some AA batteries, which is great. Um, my other one takes D batteries, and you'll see what a pain that is. Um, and the battery pack is actually uh, on the side, and I'll show you that. So this is where the batteries live. So I'm just going to leave it kind of like that so you can see it. Basically, you open the battery case by going like so, and then you pop out the batteries. A little difficult with one hand, but here we go. <laughs> so as you can see, it's got six batteries, and these are the regular uh, Energizer Eco Advanced. Today, what I'm gonna do, and what I advise you guys to do if you can, is to use lithium batteries for your trail cameras. They aren't cheap, but my goodness, they last a really long time. You know, I set these batteries up a few months ago and they're already at 50%, which is not that great. If you use the lithiums, I find that you can take hundreds of pictures and, you know, probably over a hundred videos or more um, and still have a really good battery um, power. Uh, I did this uh, last winter. Uh, no, actually I set them up two Marches ago <laughs> where I got the camera and uh, I let it go for a full year and it literally those batteries lasted through a harsh winter um, with excellent power a whole year which I mean you're not gonna get that with your regular copper tops or your even your energizers um, you will have to change them at least a couple of times a year that's what I found with this camera but the lithium makes a big difference also makes a big difference in the cold this camera was able to turn on at minus 26 and capture some really stunning photographs of uh, you know wolves and coyotes um, out on the river there so that was pretty amazing I was extremely happy that I was able to do so I think this year I might actually get a little cozy uh, to put over um, the trail cams just to see if I can get it to turn on uh, when it's a little bit uh, colder because uh, we certainly get to minus 30 minus 35 and I would like to capture I missed on some really good photographs uh, last year because it, uh, it conked out below minus 26 but Minus 26 is still not, that's not too shabby actually for it to turn on and start working. So let's switch them out for the lithiums. So with this uh, Strikeforce HD, um, when I go into my trail camera photos, I can set the photo quality to ultra, which will save a larger picture. Um, and it's a very high quality picture at 10 megapixels. 
Some cameras actually shoot at less than that, so five megapixels just out of the box. Um, I say if you can um, get a trail camera with better, um, you know, resolution to go for it. You know, this camera also shoots HD video, which I find amazing, um, and it's it's great. You don't get these grainy videos. Uh, you don't get grainy photographs either. So um, it, I would say if you can to go for a camera with higher megapixels and that shoots in HD if it's doing video. So in this camera, I can actually adjust the photo quality and video quality. Okay, so I can set lower video quality or higher video quality. I always set everything um, to the highest possible settings. But for example, I can set it to 1.3 megapixels, but I can store a lot more on the card if I'm not gonna be here that often or if I leave, want it, leave it up for like a year or something like that. But I definitely want it at high quality and my video at high quality as well. Video length, um, you know, you can set this to different lengths too. Here we've got a minute. I find that's pretty good. And when I set up my trail camera on video mode, I usually set it to one minute just because I, I like those short clips. It gives me what I want to see and I don't spend forever uh, in the studio editing those things out. The next thing on here is picture delay. So um, how the camera recovers after taking a photograph, when will it take the next one? So I have this one set at five seconds. I think that's pretty good. I mean, it, it will eat up your card quickly if you've got a lot of animals kind of going through because it will take a photo every five seconds. Sometimes you can have it set it to one second or a lot longer, two minutes. If there's a lot of, you know, slow animals kind of moving through, you don't really want, you know, 50 pictures of the same deer. Um, but, you know, I don't really have a lot of animals going through this location at this time. Um, so I, I set it up at five seconds and, uh, you know, I think it's pretty good. There's also um, multi-shot mode, um, so we can take burst mode, um, take a burst of pictures. I don't find that terribly useful for me, so I leave it off. Temperature units, Celsius or Fahrenheit, and I've got the camera name here at property, and um, I've got the image data strip on. This camera has an option uh, to test motion, um, so you can sort of make sure you've aligned your camera properly when you've got it put on the tree. When you're doing time lapse, uh, it can do the frequency in lots of different times. So two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, five seconds. So you get a general idea of, you know, if you're wanting to see what, you know, if you're doing a build and you want to film that, you can do that. Um, or if animals are coming through and you want to get a general idea of the day, um, you know, you can set it whatever time frame you want um, for getting those photographs. And here's that setup for the time-lapse period. I have it set it all day, but you can definitely adjust that as well. So you can set it for an hour, two, three, four, and so on. I just leave it at all day. And then this also has the option to delete all of your pictures on the SD card in the field. And then if you're gonna um, output your videos onto the TV, that's an option there. So let's review a little bit about trail camera placement. So when you're looking around for places to put a trail camera, you certainly want to put it in an area where you see lots of sign, um, be it poop or tracks or you know antler rubs, things like that. Um, winter time is a great time to get started scouting out an area because it's really obvious uh, when you can see tracks. But certainly spring and summer and fall, you can certainly see lots of sign as well. Um, so you want to set it up along a trail or an open area uh, where you can see what's going on. Uh, I've also placed it on shorelines, uh, looking down the shore to see what kind of uh, wildlife is there as well. I personally don't uh, bait uh, to attract animals into the trail camera. I know some people that would put up salt licks and things like that where it is legal. Uh, however, I don't believe in sort of, um, you know, encouraging animals to think that I'm their source of food because then I think that leads to human-animal conflict more times than not. What I do sometimes is I put the camera up by a natural kill site. Um, so if I've come across uh, a deer carcass, um, you know, two times this uh, past winter, an elk got chased onto the ice uh, and drowned. Same with a deer. Um, so I put up the camera, um, you know, by those sites because I knew animals were gonna be active there and I wanted to see what was going on. So that's sort of what I do. On a rare occasion, I've put sort of a novel object near a trail camera, so not food, but something that um, an animal may be curious and want to sniff. For example, uh, I put down a little piece of wooden board um, on a pathway where I knew a bear was going through. And uh, the bear, you know, you could see, I put it right down in front of where the camera would be, just a little bit farther out. And he went and he sort of had a sniff at it and kind of looked around. That way I could see a little bit more uh, about him. 
Um, but again, it was not food, it was just a novel object, something to pique the curiosity of the animal to take a look at it. When placing trail cameras, um, you want to know, you know the area where you want to look at. For example, I want to get a shot going down this trail. In this area, a lot of deer, elk, and moose go through. Um, so what I want to do is I actually want to point the camera to look down the trail. I don't want to put the camera looking across the trail because what would happen there, um, you would have a very split second to get that animal before it walked out of the frame. This way, it's going to take a bit longer to walk down the trail. You're going to probably get more than one or two shots of it. Um, fingers and toes crossed. But definitely you don't want to put a camera across the trail. You want to aim it downwards on the trail. When you set up the camera, again, uh, you want to sort of point it away from the sun. I don't really want to, it's not ideal to point it this direction at the sun because it will wash out your image and uh, also you'll get a lot of false starts on the camera. It'll take pictures of the trees bending in the breeze and that's not what you want. Also, you can see the camera here, you know, it's got sort of loose strapping here. Uh, that can be irritating and stressful for an animal to sort of see this flapping around. So I usually try to, um, you know, wrap it around the tree a little bit more. I try to tuck it in so the wind won't catch it and make it flap around. You know, for deer and elk, you probably want to put it maybe at chest height, um, looking down the trail. That's an important thing, knowing what uh, size the animal is that you're going to look at. Um, you know, deer and elk, you got a pretty good idea of, uh, you know, how big they are. Moose are a lot larger, so you want to put them a little bit higher up in the tree. Um, you know, looking down a trail is not so bad. You know, you might get them as they're kind of coming in and might not miss them, but if they come too close to the camera and your camera's too low, you're going to get a leg shot. Or if it's too high, you're just not going to see anything. Maybe you'll see some antlers going through. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's all you need to know is that, you know, there's a buck coming through and that's fine. But, uh, you know, you really want to try to get your placement and that comes with experience. If you're looking for turkeys, you know, um, smaller animals, uh, definitely lower on the ground is best. So you can see I've set the camera up here, but I've got this sort of tree in my way. Um, so you want to remove all obstructions to your view, even if they're, you know, down a ways as well. Um, like this stuff right here, these plants right here, they're kind of tall. They could get in the way and obstruct a really nice view of an animal kind of coming through here. So uh, you're, you know, you can kind of cut this stuff down if it bothers you, if you're thinking you're not going to get a good shot. Another little cool trick that I have to show you guys is if you're not really sure, um, you know, what, you know, you're getting exposed on your camera, what scene you're getting. Um, if you have a cell phone, what you can do is line up the uh, camera with the lens on your trail cam and then take a, a photo and then you can kind of look in your phone and uh, see what you can see. So let's give that a try. So I've got my phone here. So on the back, that's where my uh, lens is. So I'm going to line that up exactly with the lens right there and then I'm going to take a picture. So you can see the two lenses are overlapping and it's the same sort of angle as the camera. And I'll take a picture. Now I'll look at my camera and you can see right there exactly the angle that I have. So I know that I'm getting a good bit of that trail um, going up there. So I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to leave the camera as is and set it to trail mode. Another important thing to consider is that your trail cameras could get stolen. Um, you know, so some people have the, uh, you know, lock boxes over top of them, uh, cabling and a lock. Um, it helps that they're camouflaged, um, but be aware your things could get stolen. So whenever you set them up, make sure that you've got them in a location um, where you feel comfortable where they are. And if you want to purchase a lock box, uh, you can get them as well from a lot of major retailers. One thing I did not do in this video uh, is to use gloves to set up my trail cameras. It is advised to use cotton gloves or something to remove so you don't have your scent all over the cameras. I found over the years that animals are aware of your smell. Uh, they smell way better than we do and I've had animals come up, sniff the camera um, and uh, be quite concerned with them. So if you don't want that, uh, then certainly uh, use some gloves when you're handling your trail cams. One of my favorite things about this camera is that it has an infrared flash. So with the infrared uh, flash, um, it doesn't wash out the animal. Um, they can see it, they can be startled by it but it's less disturbing, I find, than a bulb flash, which is what I have on the Moultrie. The Browning Strikeforce HD uh, shoots photos in color, and then during nighttime, they're black and white, and the video it shoots is color during the day, and then black and white at night as well. I wanna show you guys the Stealth Cam Trail Camera Card Reader. I find this a really convenient way to look at your cards from your trail cams in the woods, especially if you are gonna be you know, just want to see if you got the, the money shot or not. And if you didn't, you can put the card back. But if you did, you may want to uh, take the card out and store it on your computer. All those nice pictures and videos. So, it's a fairly small unit. You can see the size there. 
bit bigger than some of the bigger cell phones. And you take your SD card and you pop it down in this little slot here at the bottom. You just pop it in there. Then we'll turn it on and see what we got. Power button's here at the top. All right, so it boots up pretty quickly. You can see you've got some pictures on there. This part allows you to look at images. This is video. It does playback sound, so if you bring your headset, you can uh, plug it in right here to listen to the sound. And this is sort of a settings button down here. So uh, we'll go over to the photographs first and we'll click on that. All right, so you can see we've got a few pictures there. Let's take a closer look. So as you can see, click enter here on that photo. And you can see there's one of my flying squirrel down there. If I scroll over, got mama and baby deer, another deer. Nice buck going down the trail. So that's great. Now to back out, we hit menu again. And let's just see, we'll go to the video spot. We'll click enter. And there is audio on the Browning Strike Force. Uh, I don't have my headset here with me today. So we'll just watch the video. And there you go. Really nice video of a raccoon going down on the dock there. That card was a bit of a compilation of uh, some of the pictures that I've got, just so I could show you this unit. One thing about the unit, it only plays um, AVI videos and does your JPEG images. So if you have images stored in any other way, it will not show them, and same with the video. It would be really nice if this thing had some onboard storage. Um, you know, if I wanted to take my pictures off the SD card, put it on here, and bring it back to the cabin and the computer, that would be great. But so far, it does not have that feature. So I can only look at it you know, turn it off, decide if I want to swap out the card, put in a new one, or just take out this old card, you know, and pop it back in my trail cam. Just a cool little product for you guys that I want to show you. There's a few um, blank shots, which uh, it's very common to those of us used to uh, working with trail cameras. And the most common reason for the blank shots, um, one is that you have a camera that the sensor is a little bit bigger um, than the actual sort of what the lens can see. So, um, you know, it senses the animal in the area um, and it will take a picture. However, um, you know, if your lens doesn't have a wide enough um, scope to it, it will not see the animal. Another reason actually uh, that I didn't think of was that sometimes animals go through and they're very fast. Um, so they'll, like a bird will kind of fly through, um, so you won't really see it, or a deer will run through. Sometimes you can see a little bit of a tail or an ear or something, so you know they've kind of gone through quickly. Other times you've got the camera set up incorrectly, and so a smaller animal uh, has gone through it, or an animal's sort of in the brush that you don't notice, and uh, that'll set off uh, the camera, and you'll, you won't really see anything on the screen. Another reason is that if you sort of have your camera um, where the sun's pointing at it all the time. You know, if you have a southward direction, the sun's just arcing along it all day. Um, that I find falsely triggers um, the sensor that there's an animal nearby. And so you'll get a bunch of pictures of, uh, you know, waving grass and trees. Um, and uh, you won't see an animal in the camera shot there. So that can be really frustrating and that's a hard lesson to learn. Uh, I've done that a few times, unfortunately. Um, but the best uh, advice is to have it, if you can, pointing in a northward direction. Uh, or sort of out of the sun, because the sun does create a lot of false uh, images that don't contain wildlife. So here we are coming up on the mole tree next. Let's have it on this trail as well. So this one, as you can see, is a lot larger. So there's my hand for comparison. You can see it's a lot bigger, okay? smaller buckle. The buckle failed on it, so I bought a new one. So we'll take this off and take a look at it. So right off, you can see it's got a really sturdy case, which is great. They're all waterproof. Um, you can see at the top it has a flash, like we talked about earlier. Um, this tends to startle the animals and wash them out. Um, so, uh, you know, when they get really close, then you just don't know what you have when it flashes at night. Down here there's a sensor, and above that is the lens. When we open it up, you can see there's a switch there. I'm going to just turn it off. It's not taking pictures of the ground. 
And this is the problem here. It takes six C batteries. Um, I thought earlier they were Ds, but they're Cs, but that's a lot of battery. I can't really find any uh, C lithium batteries, so I just use the copper tops, but again, they really don't last that long, and this camera does not turn on well in the cold. That's one of the reasons why I'm looking to replace it. So on the side there, it has its SD card, the USB port like the other camera. Um, what else can I show you? Well, it's got sort of a more basic sort of system here to put it in, set the date, time, different modes. Again, your burst multi-shot mode, your photo delay there. You know, you're gonna let it sit for you know five seconds, one minute, two minutes between photos or 10 minutes. Um, this one has an option to aim. So there's a red light that comes on in the front. You can see it right there. Um, and when it's a little shady, you can see, you know, where that beam illuminates uh, is where your camera is gonna take the photo. But I've shown you a little way in the other video there how to uh, see where your camera's aiming. So if we turn it on, sort of got this little screen up top here. So it's taken 11 photographs and the batteries are at full charge. I replaced them the last time. If I go through the knobs here, you can see, you know, there's the, the date, the time, um, the modes, and you can kind of scroll through the modes here. Enter photo, video, yeah, photo and video. And then for photo delay, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes, and 15 seconds. And then your burst mode there as well. So you can take you know one picture when an animal triggers it, or you can take multiple pictures, like two. I just leave it at one. Again, here's the area where you can delete your card, uh, yes or no, then your aim. So a pretty basic unit there, uh, and it does the job. Um, it does not have as many megapixels as my Browning Strike Force, so I don't find the, the pictures as clear, but you know, they're nice. I can see what's going on, so I'm not really complaining there. Um, the video is not as good, um, but again, I can see everything I need to see. So let's see what we've got. We've got 11 pictures. So there we go. We've got a good one there of a deer standing nice and squarely in the, the frame there. This camera also uh, has the, the date, the time, and the temperature. I've got it actually in Fahrenheit there. Um, I don't know if you can switch it to Celsius, but I've always left it in Fahrenheit on this one. This uh, is an example of an early morning shot. So you can see the deer off to the right-hand side there. Uh, again, there's a thing where the sensor tripped it, but the animal's just peeking into the frame. Um, so you're only seeing its head. Here's an example of a nighttime shot. This one was shot at 2.51 AM. Doesn't look like there's anything in this frame you know, maybe a flying squirrel went through, um, or a mouse is on the ground, or there's a deer sort of standing behind uh, the camera, or maybe a fox or something. Who knows? I guess we'll never find out. And of course, the selfie. You're gonna get lots of these um, when you're setting up your trail camera. <laughs> so we'll just uh, put the card back in there. Now if that other uh, product there had a, the stealth cam there had a delete mode, I'd probably delete some of the selfies I grabbed, but oh well. Shows that I was there, I guess. And there you go, that's the Moultrie. Hey guys, I'm hearing uh, big time coyotes within a few hundred yards of me here. I think they're down on the bay. It's close. Sounds like they killed something. A little rendezvous thing. No idea if you guys could hear that or not, but that was really close. I'm pretty sure they know I'm here. I was going to go down to the bay and uh, check out my boats and stuff, but I don't really have uh, anything here to defend myself should said coyotes decide to attack me. So I think I'm just going to take it easy and head back. All right, guys, thank you so much uh, for watching today's video. I hope you learned a little something about trail cameras. If I did not mention something or you have a question to ask me about trail cameras in general, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment uh, down below and I'll do my best to answer it. I only have experience with a couple of cameras there. But like I said, I'm looking in the very near future to extend um, my uh, arsenal of trail cameras because I really get a kick out of uh, capturing wildlife on camera. I think it's amazing, um, you know, to, to see what they're up to when I'm not around. 
All right, guys, have a great week as always. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and you wish to do so. And thumbs up and share the video um, if you think someone else would benefit uh, from uh, seeing this video. All right, have a good one.